Hello and welcome back to another update where I cover the latest developments throughout the front line in the Russo-Ukrainian war. In this new update we have and start out with a new video which is a piece of footage of the F-16 flying over Ukraine. First we had one in Lviv and now we have a clip from Odessa which is much closer to the front line. We may very soon see the first F-16 used in combat. It is likely that the Ukrainians will mostly use the F-16 for air defense, where they'll use them to shoot down Russian missiles and rockets when they launch a missile attack over Ukraine. But there's also a possibility that they will use them closer to the front line for close air support and missile support for the Ukrainian army. That will likely happen in the case of a Ukrainian offensive launching. As for the frontline changes, we have a lot of them. We have two in favor of Ukraine and several in favor of the Russians. But we start out in the direction of Krasnoyarivka, where the Russians have managed to start pushing west of the city. This shows that the Russian control over the central parts and the entirety of the city really beyond the main part of the city here in the outskirts the russians are starting to push in a western direction we already saw them going and crossing over the losova river however there's no significant presence of the russians in the northern bank of it therefore it is likely that the russians will focus here on the western part first but we cannot cross out the possibility that the russians will continue crossing over the river or launching a flanking maneuver from the east with their positions along their fortified positions of the ukrainians east of krasnorivka in the Pokrovsk section of the front line, the Russians have advanced in several directions. Starting out, the Russians have gained a foothold and captured the building and forest line in the northern outskirts of the village, moving on to the central parts of the village where fighting is now taking place. At the same time, the Russians have also advanced east along the forest line, where with this, the Russians are advancing in two directions. The eastern and central parts, the eastern part is to flank the Ukraine positions by Mishove, uh, fighting along the forest lines to cut off the Ukrainian positions east of it and move towards Skushnet further south and flank Mishove from the south uh, towards the crossing, cutting off the supply route to Skushnet and Mishove. At the same time, the Russians are also advancing east of Shelane, following the capture of the fortified positions north of the village. The Russians have now cut off the road between Shelane and Novoslivka Persia to cut off the supply to the fortified position of the Ukrainians at the fortifications east of the village. This means that the Ukrainian fortified positions east of Shelane is now cut off from any supply road between Shelane and the fortified positions. There is the village of Komishivka where the Ukrainians can move along the first line towards the fortified positions. But that will be vulnerable. They can use armored vehicles in the open roads, which is a possibility for them to resupply considering it's summer. And this is why offensive operations and generally the most movement takes place in the summer and winter periods because the open fuels can be used. And cutting off a road doesn't mean that supplies can be completely cut off. Instead, what it really gives the Russians is that it limits the area and the roads the Ukrainians can use to resupply. And this means that the Russians will be aware of which route the Ukrainians will take. Being aware of that means that there's less to reckon over with the FPV drones or other reconnaissance equipment, making, making it easier for the Russians to detect the Ukrainian units and therefore easier for them to hit. The Ukrainian units. So the more law limited the supply roads are for the Ukrainians, the more the Russians will be able to hit these supply trucks. It is similar in the reverse situation, but we're currently talking about the Russian advances. We see that the Russians are attacking here east of Shelane at the same time as they have advanced within Serhivka and captured the fortified positions north of the village. This has led to the Russians gaining an area in which they are close to the outskirts of the village in three separate directions. There is still this fortified position south of Shelane, north of Nova Shelane. So we see that the next fight will either take place within the village itself as Russians will storm it, or that they will flank it further south and cut off its final supply road and completely cut it off by capturing the fortified positions south of the village. Or the Ukrainians could be forced to withdraw from the village in a southern direction towards Nova Shelane, which will leave a gap for the Russians to exploit south of Serhivka along the railway and continue advancing in that direction. And that is the exact tactic the Russians have been using to advance to this point.
when they were fighting at progress they were moving from the northern direction pushing the ukrainians in the southern direction pushing them towards Vovche, which allowed the russians to move along the railways and advance on the flank of Vovche, which then forced the ukrainians to withdraw in a southern direction from progress to Vovche and then further south towards the fortified positions and that is what they have been doing they kept advancing first by the railways and then advancing towards the Ukrainian positions by the fortified positions here north of Shilane, while they were increasing the pressure by the fortified positions. At the same time as they were advancing in the western parts, the Ukrainians were unable to withdraw towards Shilane and instead were forced to withdraw in a southern direction towards the fortified positions, which they then continued to increase the pressure by advancing on the flank and at the same time increasing their foothold and bridgehead across in the railway lines. So the Russians continue pushing the Ukrainians in a southern direction down along the river line rather than pushing them in a western direction. This is to continue taking advantage of their advances and continue pushing the Ukrainians back. In the northern direction by the Sizhny and Ivanivka, it is clear that the Russians are doing the same tactic and here they are forcing the Ukrainians to actually withdraw in a northern direction away from Prodivka. This was done by the Russians advancing again by the railways and then advancing in a northern direction from the railway towards Vesele and now Serhivka, pushing the Ukrainians to withdraw in a northern direction. This forces the Ukrainians to go up towards Ivanivka, the Sizhny, Srivetivanovka and Novotoretsk here in the north, which would push them up against the river line. So the Russians are here going to be pushing in a western direction and northern direction as they continue pushing the Ukrainians towards the river line to cut off any withdrawal point from the Ukrainians or force them to withdraw beyond the river line, which will leave Rodivka less defended. At the same time, Rodivka does not have any significant defensive positions northeast of the town, which means that the Russians from a northeastern direction would have a strong position. At the same time, if they manage to capture the fortified positions east of Rodivka, they'll be able to advance along the thinner line of fortified positions and move into Rodivka itself. Gaining control over Rodivka will allow the Russians to breach the third line of defense just ahead of the final line of defense of Pokrovsk and start fighting over the flank of Novhrodivka and fight in the direction of Mirnorat. So we see that there is a significant pressure on the Ukrainian defenses and the defenses towards the Pokrovsk direction are completely falling into the trap of the Russians and could lead to a collapse. The Ukrainian defenses here in the Pokrovsk section of the front line are crumbling under the Russian pressure and at the same time the Ukrainian soldiers are not numerous enough to maintain their positions and under the heavy pressure of the Russians with the Russian firepower the Ukrainians are completely unable to hold their positions and the Russians are advancing on a daily basis. With the recent advances in the direction of Misove, east of Shelenia to cut off the road and flank the Ukrainian fortified positions by the river line, in the direction of Ivanivka capturing half of the town and in the direction of Lysishne, where they are moving along the forest lines to pressure Lysishne from the east and flank the fortified positions from the forest line in the south. So we see that is the main advances by the Russians and the current situation in the Pokrovsk section of the front line. In the Turetsk section of the front line, the Russians have also advanced beyond the second line of defense, heading towards the main part of Turetsk and entering the city itself. By the outskirts, we see that the Russians are moving towards the forest area just ahead of the city itself and are cutting off the positions of the Ukrainians by the electrical substation by flanking their positions along the Dacia area towards the road here south of Toretsk, which would allow the Russians to pressure the Ukrainians by flanking them from the north and hitting them from behind their fortified positions if they connect this assault in from the north with the connection and fighting in the south by New York, they'll be able to cut off the final Ukrainian fortified positions at the 2014 line of defense. At the same time, the Russians are moving on to the hill here in the southern parts of the second line of defense, the capture of which would lead to the Russians gaining a good enough position on the second line of defense to start really heading towards Turetsk itself, both from the Dash area in the east to first line Dash area to the south, and launching operations in the southern direction towards Nelly Pivivka here by north of New York or towards New York itself.
At the same time, the capture of which would lead to Russians having full control over the southern part of the second line of defense, which would again lead to the Russians having a very strong position in the second line of defense and having secured their breach. At the same time, it allowed the Russians to flank the Ukrainian second line of defense from the western parts and then use that to take an advantage of the current situation, put a lot of soldiers into the forest areas and start hitting the Ukrainians from the rear, pincering it from both the east and the west, which will allow the Russians to put heavy pressure on the Ukrainians and significantly improve the positions here in the city of Turetsk. In the southern flank of Bakhmut, the Russians have advanced and captured a fortified position south of Ivanivske. This is followed by positional fighting along the Shivka, which has happened over the past few days, and this has led to the Russians doing some positional fighting in the southern flank of Bakhmut, which makes it clear that they're moving to gain control over the canal area. At the same time, the Russians are fighting over a foothold in Chesavyar itself, where continuous fighting happens along the canal line, where the Russians are moving in to occupy the first houses in Chesavyar and build up a large enough force to start moving in towards the central parts of the city and gain control over the eastern part of it, which is between the railway to the north and the first patch to the south. The Russians are developing an offensive operation within Chesavyar itself. Further north, in the direction of Makiivka, the Ukrainians have launched a counterattack and have recaptured the majority of Makiivka, where they have regained control over the central parts of the village, leaving the southern and northern parts remaining under Russian control. The very southern parts still remain under Ukrainian control, which indicates that the Russian part in the south is very weak and there's no significant presence there. The Ukrainians can likely recapture it quickly and that will mean that the Russians have lost their foothold within the main part of the town and only hold control over the northern parts which are disconnected from the main part of the town. Further north here in the Vovchensk section of the front line the Ukrainians have continued operations during the past few months leading to them recapturing parts of the forest patch area. There's no clear date as to when this operation happened. It was reported that it happened in the months of June and July, but there was some positional fighting and this has led to the Ukrainians recapturing these parts, which was just recently confirmed. And this means that they've cut off the supply road going towards Staritsia. And that means that the Russian positions in western parts of Staritsia are actually cut off from supplies, except from what goes through the forest area. This means that it's very limited the amount of soldiers the Russians can have in the western parts of Staritsia, and it will likely lead to the Ukrainians regaining control over the western parts of the village, which will allow them to regain full control over Staritsia and start moving in the direction of Pohrovatka. So we see that the Russian defenses in the Wolfgang section of the front line are very weak, considering their lack of personnel in the area. But this has led to the Ukrainians, with a large concentration of forces, to be able to push the Russians back bit by bit. And that is all for this update. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and check out my Patreon for additional content. Thank you all for watching, and have a great day.